Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about the various input signals that we can apply to our process model. Let's remember what our process model looks like. Remember that we use a block diagram to represent a physical system. So, for example, let's say that we are modeling a water bucket getting filled up. The input will be the water coming into our system and the output will be the height of the water within the bucket. The block, that is the process model, is essentially the same thing as a function in math. It provides us one output for a given input. Therefore, it is essentially just an input to output relationship. But is it important that we talk about the different input signals you may ask? Well, these different input signals essentially allow us to test our control system's performance. That is why we can also refer to them as standard test inputs. In this video, I'll also be showing you the Laplace transform of each input but I'll also have a separate video validating those for you, so if you're interested in how any of them were derived, please check out those links in the description below. So, like I said previously, in this video, we're going to be just talking about the different input signals that we can have. Let's begin with the simplest, a step input signal. The step input signal is basically the same thing as turning on a light switch. At the designated time, we jump to our input and then see how the system would react. Using our earlier example, you can think of this as our tap being fully opened at time zero. We represent the step input signal like so, which should make sense as at time zero, our input jumps from zero to one. The Laplace transform of the step input function is A over S, where A is simply the magnitude of our input. Next, we have the ramp input. With this input, the signal will progressively grow with time, which is where it gets its name. It looks like a ramp. Also note that this ramp is going to have some constant slope. We represent the ramp input signal like this. Going to our bucket example, you can imagine that at time zero, we have no incoming water. At time one, there is some, and then by the time we get to say 20 seconds, we have the tap running very fast. The Laplace transform of a ramp input is the slope of your ramp over S squared. We could also have a parabolic input signal. As its name implies, our input signal will be growing parabolically with time and is represented mathematically like so. And its Laplace transform is also presented here. Another input that I want to mention is noisy input, which is just an input signal that has no pattern. We try to remove this as much as possible. It is almost always undesirable. Next, a rectangular pulse input is similar to a step input signal. However, it turns off after a given amount of time. This would be like turning our tap on all the way for say three seconds and then shutting it off. We represent the rectangular function mathematically like so, and the Laplace transform of it is also presented here. We could also have an impulse input, which is a hypothetical scenario in which our input is extremely high at one exact instant, but zero everywhere else. This is not achievable in practice, but we can try to approximate it the best we can. This is also sometimes called the Dirac delta function. You could think of this like a lightning bolt hitting something. It's a huge surge in a very small time period. The Laplace transform of this standard test signal is one. Lastly, we could have a sinusoidal input signal, which simply looks like a sinusoid. This sinusoidal input signal is represented mathematically like so, and its Laplace transform is presented here. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of input signals in control systems. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.